this is Captain Chaudhary. In my last video on SF beam, we talked about uniform beam. We talked about uniform beam that is uh, supported at knife edge. We also talked about uniform beam that is supported on a flat support. And on top, we have in one situation a point weight and in another situation spread weight. Now, uh, in this particular uh, video, I want to talk about a numerical uh, that is on uh, understanding of SFBM and load curve in case of a box vessel. A simple situation. This numerical is from my book. It says that there is a box vessel uh, 40 meters in length. It has got four compartment. It's uniformly weighted. So each uh, it, total weight is 200 tons and each uh, uh, 10 uh, meter segment will be uh, therefore of 50 tons right or you can say that uh, this 40 meter uh, box vessel which is there uh, the weight per unit length is 5 tons per meter it has got hole number 1 and 3 with 160 tons of cargo and 2 and 4 with 280 tons of cargo naturally this box vessel will be uh, a sagging and as per our convention, the bending moment curve will uh, come on the positive side. That is our sign convention for sagging. So how to do this question? Let me first draw uh, the symbolic diagram of this box vessel. It's in four parts and you have 160 tons in one and four, one and four, two and three, you have 280 tons. Now uh, the total displacement of the vessel will be uh, double of 163 320 plus double of this that is 560 plus 200 so that will be uh, 1080 ton. And total displacement should be equal to total buoyancy force. So we say that the total buoyancy force is 1080 ton. And you can see that the ship is loaded symmetrically about the midship. And if the loading is symmetrical about the midship and the uh, empty ship or the light ship itself is uniformly weighted. So we can say that after such a loading, the vessel be, will be on even keel. And the buoyancy per unit length all over the ship also will be uniform because the draft is uniform and draft or underwater portion decides the buoyancy per unit length. So buoyancy per unit length will be 1080 divided by 40 that will be 27 tons. Now uh, load curve is one of the first curve that we are going to draw and uh, let us say we if you want to make the load curve now to compare the buoyancy and weight right to compare the buoyancy and weight at any point basically of course the buoyancy is upwards and weight is downwards they should be in the different sides of x-axis but to compare to compare the two, what I have done is, what uh, we would do is we will treat the buoyancy as well as weight on the same side that is on the negative side. So if we uh, take the scale uh, of uh, uh, weight and buoyancy as 5 tons per meter, then 5, 10, 15, 20, it would be like this, 5, 10, 15, 20 and because the length of the vessel is 40 meters and we want to fix it up in about 16 centimeter so uh, let us say 40 divided by 16 is how much 40 divided by 16 is 2.5 so let us take the length scale as 2.5 meters is equal to 1 centimeter so it means that one hold is completed in four centimeters so 
so this is how and we can probably say this is a b c d e f g h i now if you want to uh, plot the buoyancy curve on the negative side the buoyancy is 27 tons per meter so it will be somewhere over here the buoyancy curve now if we uh, look at the weight part the light weight per unit length light weight per unit length is 5 tons per meter and the cargo weight in hole number 1 and 3 1 and 3 the cargo weight per unit length is 160 divided by 1 and 4 it is 160 divided by 10 that is 16 so total it will be 21 tons per meter right so uh, 21 tons per meter would be something like this and in hole number 2 and 3 it is 5 plus 28 that is 33 33 tons per meter so you can see that if you consider the buoyancy curve as a reference line the part of the weight curve goes above the buoyancy curve and part of the weight curve goes below the buoyancy curve and that forms the load curve so if you consider the buoyancy line to be a zero line the rest of the curve can be considered as the load curve so we can say that the load curve is a weight with respect to the buoyancy curve weight that is caused on the ship with respect to the buoyancy curve or in other words if we consider the buoyancy line as zero line the weight that is caused on the positive side and the negative side can be considered as the load uh, uh, that is caused on the ship. So uh, there is this plus 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and then there is minus 6, minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, let us draw the load curve. The unit is tons per meter. Right? We have in uh, the hole number one the load curve as six tons per meter in hole number two and three it is minus six tons per meter and once again in hole number four it is plus six tons per meter so this is the load curve this is the load that is caused on the ship so plus one plus two plus 6 and similarly minus 1 and minus 6 so once we have drawn the load curve we need to find out the SF curve SF ordinates will be found by calculating the area under the load curve to the point to the left of point under consideration so suppose we want to find out what is the shear force at B we need to find out this area Right? We need to find out this area and that will give me uh, uh, SF ordinate. Now, uh, area is length into breadth. Now, this is meters and this is tons per meter. So, when we find out the area, the area's unit will be tons. Right? So, that was the SF at various points. So, at A, we can say that the shear force is zero. At B, it is like 5 meters that is half the uh, ship's uh, hold length multiplied by 6 tons per meter so at B the shear force is going to be 30 at C it is going to be 60 negative area will be subtracted so at D the area under the curve would be 60 minus 30 that is 30 and at E that is the midships of the ship the area under the load curve is going to be 0 so we are going to have zero shear force at E. F it will be minus 30, minus 60, and then minus 30, and then zero. So the minimum value is zero, and the maximum value is 60. Okay. So let's choose a scale. You know, like load, we had taken the scale as one tons per meter 
is equal to 1 centimeter, you know, and the length scale we had taken 2.5 meters is equal to 1 centimeter. For shear force, let us take the scale, like uh, if you want to have uh, uh, 60 over here, let's take the scale as 10 tons is equal to 1 centimeter. So, if we plot these values, you will find that the shear force curve runs like this. And it follows the, the rules. It follows the rules. That is, if the previous curve is horizontal straight line, the next curve is going to be slant straight line. And if the previous curve is changing the direction, from plus to minus or minus to plus, the next curve is going to have the peak values there. So you can see the peak SF value at C and at G, that is the quarter length from the ship. Now, what we have got is the shear force curve. Now, next is the bending moment curve. Area under the shear force curve to the left of point under consideration will give me the bending moment value. So, uh, suppose the shear force at this point is 30, yes, and this distance is 5 meters, so 30 multiplied by 5, that is 30 multiplied by 5, 30 multiplied by 5, multiplied by half, because area of the triangle is half base into height, so this is equal to 75 the unit is tons meter right and uh, uh, if this value is 75 what about this value now this much now you can see that this area is trapezium this height is 30 and this height is 60 what is the mean of 30 and 60 45 and the distance between the two is 5 so the mean SF value that is 45 multiplied by the distance between the two uh, ordinates that is 5 meters that will give me 225 so uh, the area under the curve under the trapezium shape uh, for the trapezium shape is 225 tons meter right so uh, this also would be 225 the total area up to C is 300 and then total area up to D will be 3 plus 2 525 and total area up to E is going to be 600 because 525 plus 75. Now uh, there is one rule if the ship is symmetrically loaded you know if the ship is symmetrically loaded then the Bending moment curve is mirror image about the midships. However, we will calculate now this much portion is minus 75. So at F it will be 600 minus uh, 75 that is 525. And this is another minus 225. So 525 minus 225 gives me 300. Right? And this is another 225 300 minus 225 is equal to 75 and last one it will be 75 minus 75 so you can see the bending moment at the ends is zero and uh, we are deriving the bending moment values from the sf curve and uh, a lot depends on the shape depends on the previous curve the previous curve is slant straight line so next curve is going to be curvy linear right and uh, the previous curve is changing the direction at the midships. So at midships, I'm expecting that the bending moment curve will be maximum. So the maximum value of the bending moment curve is 600. So let's take a scale like uh, in 600. So 100 tons meter is equal to 1 centimeter. So uh, 0, 100, 200 and so on. This will be 600. And when we draw these uh, bending moment, this bending moment curve, I uh, need to have the peak value at midship. And if we draw these uh, points, you will find that in this part, the curve appears to be concave 
because the previous curve is going upwards, the center of curvature in this part will be upwards. And in the next part, the curve is slanting downwards, so the center of curvature will also be down. So this is the shape of the bending moment curve, initially concave and then convex. And same thing is repeated on this side, convex and then concave. So this is the bending moment curve. The maximum value of bending moment is 600 tons meter. And we can say that if I multiply by 9.81 gives me 5886. So maximum value is 5886 kilo newton meter. That is the bending moment that happens at the midship. Right? So uh, for the ease of figures etc or understanding we have drawn the SF and BM curve in terms of tons and tons meter but in case you want to instead of finding out what is the shear force in tons you want to find out in kilonewtons we multiply by 9.81 similarly bending moment instead of tons meter if you want to find out in kilonewton meter we multiply by 9.81 so here is a, a diagram or calculation to understand uh, shear force and bending moment we have drawn all the three curves in the uh, same area same portion the idea is we do understand the relative uh, relationship between the three curves right the first curve drawn is load curve uh, positive area should be equal to negative area and area under the load curve to the left of point under consideration will give sf ordinate we can see sf curve also the positive area is equal to negative area but same is not true about the bending moment curve you can see that the entire ship is uh, sagging so the bending moment the maximum bending moment is 5886 kilo newton meter sagging or 600 tons meter sagging